In this tutorial, we're going to show how to use the layer management tools to simplify design, making it easier to select different vectors for different types of toolpath. For example, in this project, we're going to create some pocketing toolpaths around the top area. We're going to create a pocketing toolpath in the bottom area, a raised prismatic toolpath for the lettering, and an engraving or a V carving toolpath for the, the detail of the wharf. And then finally, cut the sign out. If we open the layer management tool, you'll see here that we've we've got everything imported onto one single layer. So we've got a layer called Import Howling Wolf. Everything in the design is on that one layer. We can use the, the layer control options to move different vectors onto new layers. So for example, I can select this top pocketed area, right click on this, use the option on the quick menu to move to layer. We can say new layer. Let's call this top pocket. Give this a color. So we'll make that light blue. Click OK. Now the layer is left visible for the moment. Click in the background and you'll see that vector is now being drawn as blue. We've also got the layer in the list here. So the layer control manager shows the new layer in the list. And this can be made visible or invisible by clicking on the little, the little checkbox. Let's now select the text in the bottom here. So click and drag, select the text objects. And again, right hand mouse button, move to new layer. Let's call this text. Give this a color, we'll make this red. Again, leave it visible, click OK. So clicking in the background, the text is now drawn, displayed in red. And we've got the option in the layer control tree. So we can switch this on or off. Okay, so now we've started to add different layers that can be switched on or off to make it easier to select other objects in the design. And so for example, this area for the detail in the wolf head, we can drag and select now, right hand mouse button, move this to a layer and we'll call this wolf detail. And we'll make this a, uh, Sort of dark green so click OK so there's the wolf so now we've we can switch this on or off using the top option here the little checkbox will switch everything off or we'll switch everything back on again so we've set things up and moved them onto new layers that can be made visible or invisible by clicking on the arrows here so now we've got everything on different layers I'm going to close the layer control manager. Let's swap from the drawing tab to the toolpath tab. And oh, sorry, let's just leave the, the layer control open for a moment. So toggle the layer manager on. So we've just got the layer manager visible and this can float around the interface. We can also resize this so we can make it bigger or smaller. So let's make it sort of that sort of size as small as possible really. Now with the layer manager open, I can say, okay, we're now going to switch everything off apart from the, the top pocketed area. So this is the area that I wish to machine as a, as a pocket. So I'm going to say, create a pocketing toolpath. Before we do that, I'd always recommend checking your, your material properties. So here we've got inch and a half thick material. Let's have a, a retract height of 0.1 of an inch. And at the end of cutting, we'll get the tool to lift one inch above the material. So click OK. So we're going to create a, a pocketing toolpath. So we're going to pocket to a depth of half an inch. And if we, we just use if we just use a single tool, let's say a quarter inch M mil, if I say calculate that toolpath, we get a very dense toolpath. If we look at the estimated machining time for this, so we say estimate the machining time. The software is telling me that it's going to take you know, 50 minutes just to machine that area out, which is going to take quite a long time. So instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is use two tools. So we're going to use a quarter inch end mill to finish the profile, the detail, but I'm going to use a bigger tool. So this time let's use our half an inch end mill to get rid of as much material as possible in a single go. So we'll say that this can cut to full depth in one pass. So click OK and calculate. Now we've got two toolpaths here. 
if we look at the estimated machining time, we've now come down to 14 minutes as opposed to 50 minutes. So what we would then do, what we'd now do is we'd say, use the half inch end mill, preview this toolpath. That's gonna to get rid of the stock material for us. Let's just add some color to this. So we'll say, add some color. Let's make this a sort of turquoisey color. And then we would change the cutter for the quarter inch end mill. And this will profile round and pick out a little bit more of the detail. So preview this toolpath you'll see that that's just profiled around just it's, it's machined away some of the detail in the corners you'll see in the mouth and also in the uh, in the areas on the little Christmas tree there if we change the color for that toolpath just to be red for a moment you'll see where that toolpath's machining material away but I'm going to make this the same color as the other toolpath for the moment so that's calculated the top area so we pocket machine using two toolpaths if we go back to the design view, switch off the pocketed area, and let's switch on the the wharf detail. So with this these vectors visible, I can click and drag. This time I'm going to use an engraving toolpath. So we're going to say V carve to a flat depth of say 0.2 of an inch. We'll use a a 90 degree half inch diameter V bit for the detail, and to get rid of the flat area. We'll use a little quarter inch end mill. So quarter inch end mill. Calculate these two toolpaths. So now we've got the, the pocketing toolpath. If we select that toolpath, that's a quarter inch. We can say preview. And we then change the cutter for our V bit. Say preview that. And that gives us the detail for the wharf. We can give these two toolpaths some color. So we'll say, let's add some color. Let's make these a dark red. And the detail also dark red, like so. Next, I'm going to machine a pocket in the bottom of the design. So to do that, I'm going to switch everything on. <clears throat> I'm going to switch off the, <clears throat> sorry, the top pocket, and we'll switch off the the wolf detail design. Now I'm going to machine between the text, and if we double click on the text, it selects everything on that layer holding the shift key down I'm going to select the outer boundary and we're going to pocket machine the background material away leaving the text raised so we go back to the toolpath operations now we've already done this a pocketing operation using a, using a, a half inch end mill and a quarter and I'm going to use the same toolpath setup for this bottom area so if we select this toolpath and we say copy Okay, so now we've got a toolpath here that, that's a duplicate. Let's double click and let's call this bottom pocket region. Remember if we double click on the on the vectors on the vector layer, it selects the layer, all the vectors on that layer, and then shift and select the outer boundary. So we're going to pocket machine the background away and we'll we'll carve this three quarters of an inch deep. So we're going to use a half a gem mill to get rid of the stock then the quarter inch m mill to machine around the detail so now we say calculate we'll see now that we've got pocket pocket bottom pocket we've got the half a gem mill toolpath preview that so this get this gets rid of as much material as we can as fast as we can and then we change the cutter to the quarter inch bit so this this is going to profile machine around preview that toolpath and pick out some of the detail around the lettering so this is going down in in incre small incremental steps now we could change this to cut in a single pass because it's just cleaning up the edge of each of the letters if we if we were um, needed to uh, to increase the speed or the efficiency of machining Let's make, let's make these toolpaths, let's give them some color. So we'll make these sort of blue and the, the larger pocket area will also make that a blue color. So now we've got the lettering raised proud, but instead of it just being 2D, I want this to have a, a bevel edge or a prismatic edge to the lettering. So if we go back to the design view, deselect so we've got nothing selected. 
let's create a, a prismatic or prism carving toolpath. If we double click on the lettering, it selects the lettering. Let's say we're going to cut this with a, a wide angle, 90 degree inch and a quarter diameter V-bit cutter. The software is telling me if I click on set depth, it's telling me to get a, a sharp edge on the top of the widest letters. We need to be machining at least uh, 0.71 of an inch deep. I've pocketed the background away three quarters of an inch, so we should be okay. Let's um, calculate this toolpath. So you'll see now if we say preview the prism carving toolpath, let's rename that. So double click and we'll say prism carve text, recalculate. So if we preview that toolpath, this is forming the a prismatic edge on the lettering. And let's give that a different color. So we'll say set the color for the for the letters to be a sort of goldy color. Like so. So we've there we've now got the prism edged lettering form there. Next we're going to cut the shape out. So we go back to the design view and select the outer edge. Calculate a profiling toolpath. So we're going to profile all the way through the three inch, three inch thick material. We'll use our quarter inch end mill, cutting around the outside. Now we could cut it out and the, the sign would break free. So what I'm going to do is just add some tabs here. So add some tabs. Let's make these tabs so that we can see them. We'll make them two inches long and we'll make them 0.3 of an inch. Let's make them 0 0.5, 0 0.5 of an inch thick. Edit the tabs. So click where we want the tabs to go. So let's say we want tabs on the extreme edges. Like so, let's put a tab on this side, one on the top, close. Now if we say calculate this toolpath, before we do that, let's just check the, the pass, depth, pass depth of half an inch, which is good. Calculate the toolpath. Sorry, the software is now telling me that I'm asking it to cut three inches deep, which is, is a mistake. The material is only an inch and a half thick. So click OK, and you'll see that that's gone all the way through the material and into the bed of the machine. Not very good. So double click to edit. Let's make this a depth of 1.5 inches. Recalculate. So now if we look along through the sign, you'll see that it's now cutting just through the inch and a half thick material. And we've got the We've got the little bridges in place holding our sign. So now if we select this toolpath and we say preview, it's going to profile around the outer edge. If we look down through the edges, you'll see now that we've got the, the little bridges holding the, the, the sign in place. If we wanted this to be all the way through, we would literally say edit the toolpath, no tabs. All So this will now cut all the way through the material, preview the toolpath. And now we can say delete the waste material. So we're just left with our sign in place. And we could now save that as an image. So we could say, okay, really we, we're going to cut this out of a, a different piece of material instead of a, a cherry. Let's make this out of a, uh, a solid color. So a solid black, for example. And we could take an image of this. So we could say save image, give this a name. So Howling Wolf sign for a client or for a an image on our website and save it as a JPEG or a bitmap file. Once we're happy with the design and the toolpath, so we, we can estimate the cutting time here. So total machining time would be just over two hours. The times for each of the different toolpaths here. We can now select the save toolpaths, select each toolpath in turn, select the post processor for our machine and save these toolpaths ready to to run and cut on the CNC router or the CNC machine. So just to summarize, let's go back to our two dimensional design. We've used the, the layer management tool. So layer, toggle layer manager. We've added some new layers and we've organized our data with different elements on different layers that we can then switch on or off, making it easier to select and work on the design. Once we've set up the layers correctly, making them more manageable and easier to access, 
we've then come across and calculated a pocketing toolpath. We've then done a, a pocketing toolpath with two tools. We've then do, done a pocketing toolpath on the bottom area with an, two tools again to improve the, the speed of cutting. We've then engraved or v-carved the detail for the wolf. We've then machined some prism, raised prism lettering around the text. And finally, we've cut the shape out and we've added different colors to different parts of the, the sign using the preview, assign colors to different parts of the, of the, uh, sorry, to assign colors to each of the different toolpaths. And you'll see here next to each cutter, there's a little color, uh, little, little square color next to each tool, which represents the color that we've got selected. So for example, if we said, okay, the detail on the wolf, we really wanted that to be in white and we'll say the uh, the v-carving tool to be in white as well so we can change the colors very quick and easily and then we can save the image as an image file as a jpeg or a bitmap and we can use that for promotional purposes or for getting approval for cutting from a customer and then finally we'd save the toolpaths and run them on the cnc machine thank you for watching the tutorial